Good morning and welcome to this Felcraft Casts Hearthstone Curse of Nath Ramus Hearthstone Adventure Adventure Made Special. Now that big introduction's out of the way. Um, I'm Hammy, this is Felcraft Casts. Hope you're well and good. And in our little series of mini guides and playthroughs to Hearthstone's Curse of, Ven uh, Curse of Nath Ramus Adventure Mode, we are now going to take a look at Heroics and we're going to take a look at. Heroic Anubra Khan is our first companion any other, so let's go for Anubra Khan. So, what is a heroic? For those of you who aren't sure, if you're coming to this first, then the heroic mode is, means you can play the boss again since so you defeated them once, but they're a lot harder. They, I believe they have more health and they play in a more aggressive fashion. So, Anubra Khan, firstly, we, pl we played a control deck against him that was very effective, so let's try and control him again. So, Anubra Khan, um, to play heroic, doff difficulty bosses you do of course have to have beaten them on normal difficulty to start with so that lets us power up and of course if you beat all of these on heroic you get a new card so that is the challenge for it so Anubra Khan, Anubra Khan, his ability um, we will go through in just a second when I can see it again okay with a whirlwind of shield slam and an armor smith that gives me some early game control I'm going to toss back the shield slam and I'm going to grab instead um, and execute okay I've got options there that's good some nice different card backs there. Look at those shiny card backs. Nothing I can do on first turn. So let's analyze a new recon. Right, Skitter. He can summon a 4 4 Nerubian. Now that is nasty for two mana. So we're going to have to find ways of removing those Nerubians very, very quickly before we get overwhelmed. So as a control deck, I do have a few options, but the sheer mana efficiency of summoning that. Uh, Nerubian, it means that he could swarm with a lot of those Nerubians. At least one of those every turn from turn two makes it rock solid. And with the Death Charger flying in, Death Rattle and dealing three damage is painful as well. So what can I do? Well, I could start using my Executes on the Death Charger, but I'm probably going to want to save it in case he summons the Nerubian. So what I'm going to do instead oh, is throw down my armor smith, because I need to build up some armor. Now you may notice that I've drawn Brawl. Brawl will help me if the table gets too over the top. Down goes a coin, and he actually drops a Death Lord taunt. But when the Death Rattle, when that card finally dies, then um, I put a minion from my deck into the battlefield. Alrighty then, so I need to take out that challenge. Death Rattle, three damage to the hero, right? And the combo I need to use here, I'm going to cleave, and I'm going to execute to get that big tank off the table ASAP. Now let's see how this Death Rattle works. A random minion from my deck comes into the battlefield, and oh, look at that luck! I, I need to say. And hello, hello to Moldy. It's great to have you with us as well. We're just running through um, a little playthrough straight guide to heroic mode bosses in Curse of Max Ramus, Hearthstone's first adventure mode. And as you can see, we just lucked out. So the Death Lord, the Death Lord's Death Rattle, when he dies, he pulls one of uh, the opposing team's minions from the deck into the battlefield. And I lucked out with Cairn. So I've actually got a turn three Cairn. That is crazy. Uh, if you've not seen Ken, if you're new to Hearthstone or similar, why is Ken so good? Well, when he dies, he summons pretty much another one of himself. He summons his brother. I believe Bane is his brother. Now, we've seen um, um, Anubra Khan. No, not, he has 45 health, so he's got lots of health, but he also summons these two two Nerebians every go, which is nasty. Um, however, we're in a very good position to control those Nerebians. Um, so, I'm going to remove that from the table. Um, just straight up with Ken, I'm going to armor up, get myself nice and solid, get armored up. Remember, of course, with an armor smith on the table, whenever one of my minions takes damage, I gain one armor. And we can see a nice skitter coming into play again, but look at two mana for a four minion. And of course, remember that for some reason, a new card is a mage, so he can freeze. <laughs> it's a little bit frustrating. And getting Ken into play will let me go for a more aggressive control against those minions. Um, however, um, this is a little bit weird. Um, I prefer to have more attacking threats on the table, but I can trade, and I can trade another two of his skitters. There goes a shade of Nexoramus, and then another skitter to summon another Nerubian. Now, if too many of those Nerubians get on the table, it's going to cause me problems. Um, right, we can grab the axe. Okay, that's good. So I can now start using that mana that I've accumulated on my hero, like I would in a normal control deck, to start placing pressure upon this. So note that I can then combo in Taskmaster, I will use his one damage to remove the Nerubian, and that means that I can actually keep Bane Bloodtooth now, and I have to do some damage to the enemy hero. With the uh, various sort of armour I've accumulated over the last two goes, that will of course let me swing, use my warrior as a resource. I can use the warrior to keep the tail under control. Ugh, and there goes an abomination. Nasty. Right. 
formation drop down. Remember that he will do two damage to all characters when he passes away. So that will mean that nastiness will incur. But then again, I have some little tricks of my own. Now, which is the best way to play this? I, if I remove him, then um, if I remove him with Bane, then he will clear everyone else off the table. I can then maybe throw a Geddon down and start threatening. I think I'm going to go for that. Throw him down. Just drop a Geddon. Now, not only will Geddon let me do 7 damage, but I'll start shelling away any small minions that only Rakan drops. There's the hero power, the 4th one Arubian is on the deck, and he'll ambush her. If that perishes, then he can return a minion to his hand as well. Nasty, nasty. So, I need to think of what I want to remove. Um, now, combos here. I could either throw down Rag straight away. I'm not going to brawl, but I'm not going to throw down Rag. The reason I'm not going to throw down Rag is I think I've got a better control play here. I just need to work it out. Um, to keep Rag safe, and by throwing in, I can armor up with another Gromash. I can... Whip. Now, what I wanted to do is this. Now, that means that by bringing this Ambusher into kill range, um, I can attack with my Baron, and also remove him with the sort of damage. Baron Gen's effect at the end of the turn. Baron Gen does two damage to all other characters, heroes and minions alike. So, lots of pressure there. So, this is a pretty standard control warrior. It does have two brawls in, it's pretty crazy like that, and two cleaves. So, it's rather excessive. But you can still see that Anubrakan is swarming through. However, I've managed to get my late game cards into play now. So, you can see that with um, Gromash, this is a finishing combo Gromash um, plus Cruel Taskmaster, that will let me do uh, 12 damage in one go. Because you enrage for six, um, and then you get the additional two. Um, of the Cruel Taskmaster. So 10 mana will do me 12 damage there. That's a finishing combo. Um, what I can then do is set his remaining health to 15 by dropping Alexstrasza. You can see this is a finishing combo for my deck. And then I can drop it into 8. So regardless of what he does next go, unless he picks up the tank, then I've managed to walk through a new um by making sure we kept him under control, controlled those skitters as much as possible, get him into execute range, and then it doesn't really matter what he does. Can use all of his minions to pick all of my minions off. Note that uh, little effect there of the Nubar Ambusher returning minion to hand. And even though he may sacrifice many minions against uh, my um, Alexstrasza, he can throw down all the minions he likes because, as I've explained to you, knowing your combos in hand and how you can finish is useful. I don't even need to um, power up my Gromash, but I'm not doing this in a BM. It's a computer opponent. I just want to show you this combo. So there you go. That's a uh, Control Warrior finishing combo, where if you use those two cards together, Cruel Taskmaster activates the Enrage on Gromash and makes the two health. Why? And why? Why? And there you go, so thank you oh so much um, for tuning in. Um, for tuning in. Um, to that mini little um, Tessum Naxxramas heroic mode guide. So what did we see as a summary in terms of beating Anubrakan? We saw that control decks, like a control warrior deck, can be quite effective. Anubrakan, you need to try and keep those skitters under control. Uh, when he's summoning those four fauna rubians, if you can keep them under control and grind him down, then that's very effective. And we also saw the effectiveness of some things such as um, executing similar in the warrior pool. We saw Anubra come summon a lot of Anubra ambushes. We saw him um, doing various things like trying to bounce his minions. But really it's all about keeping his side of the board under control and shipping away his health until you have board control and are able to just push through for the victory. So thanks so much for tuning in. Um, if you're live, don't go away. We're going to be doing another run through in a second. Um, if you are not live, if you're watching on YouTube, um, check out the rest of our YouTube at youtube.com forward slash failcraftcasts. Um, we have other Curse of Naxxramas guides, videos, mini walkthroughs like this one. We also have a bunch of other stuff. We have the Hearthstone Half Hour that we do live every night, Monday through Friday. Um, Heroes of the Storm and other gaming videos as well. We'd love to see you, so please do check it out and let us know what you think. Um, if you'd like to tune in live, twitch.tv forward slash failcraftcast, as you can see in this left column. Um, and as I said, we are live Monday through Friday. It's generally between 7 and 8 p.m. UK time, but if you're in another time zone, do not despair, because we tweet on at failcraftcasts um, on Twitter um, when we're going to be going live, and generally with as much notice in advance as possible, so you can come and join the party as well. Um, but you can also see all of our vid uh, live streams are recorded on YouTube as well. 
last but not least, the website is fellcraft.org. There are blogs, a few videos. You can see some written stuff around the videos as well if you can't watch a video for any particular reason. And then some new player links, other bits and bobs. Um, so, uh, so, there we go. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. I've been Hammy. This is Falcroft Casts. If you're live, stay tuned. We're going to be getting stuck in in a sec. Um, if you're not live, I hope to see you live or on another video soon. And as always, please comment and like um, if you liked what we did. And if you do not like what we were up to, then um, please just comment and let us know what it will be so we can do some different bits and bobs. Take it easy.